and welcome back to the Duke of Scopus Studios here in Geneva. Joining me to discuss the global financial markets and what impact this could have on the domestic economy here in Switzerland is Francois Nordoff, Global Chief Investment Officer and Head of Portfolio Management at BCP. So welcome Francois. Hello. So China's currency war continues. So do you see the yuan continuing to devalue? Yeah, probably the, the one is going to be uh, under pressure for the next few more weeks for a very simple reason. I mean, uh, China has its own problem, economic problem, which is definitely something new. Uh, the growth is slowing down and they have also political issues. I'm not going to say that the current uh, problem uh, close to Peking is going to be something similar than Chernobyl for Russia in the 90s, but to a certain extent it's putting additional pressure to the Chinese authority. Therefore, we should be aware that the Chinese currency is going still to be under pressure. Indeed, when we compare it to a long-term graph like the one we have in the background, it's not a, a, a big correction, it's a technical correction because the currency appreciated a lot against dollar in the last five years. It appreciated also even more emerging currencies and Japanese yen uh, over the last five years. For instance, the, the renminbi was uh, appreciated 35% against Japanese yen. So the correction that we have now is not a devaluation or a dip, a huge depreciation. It's a, a correction which is politically sustainable and driven. There is also the fact that Chinese authorities want to show that they need not to peg their currency to the US dollar and they would like to enter the spatial uh, draw rights of the international monetary funds. Uh, currently there are only four currencies, sterling, US dollar, euro and Japanese yen. They would like to be the fifth one. Apparently it's going to be postponed until next year. Fantastic. So now looking at European stocks, so European stocks have opened lower as of recent. So is this still in reaction to the Greece problems? And when can we start to expect to see a recovery in sight? Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the correction of the, the, the stock market that uh, is currently ha happening is uh, driven indeed uh, through uh, be because of the, the Greek crisis. But Greek crisis, I would say, is, is not is not the, the big issue currently. I mean, the problem is postponed and is going to be furthermore postponed in the very near future. The, the problem is the Asian crisis. Are we going to have an emerging Asian crisis as we had it in 1996? Uh, or are we going to avoid it? And when you look to, to these types of graph, you see in Lila, you see the emerging markets. Definitely uh, emerging equity markets are under pressure also um, the, the emerging bond market is, is under pressure. We should be aware by comparing the 1996 crisis and the current crisis, things are not really similar. I mean, the economical situation of emerging countries is much better now than it was 20 years ago. Uh, the only things that change a lot, and that's very important, it's the size of the Chinese economy. Chinese economy is now the second biggest economy worldwide, where 20 years ago it was not the case. Therefore, the problem in China is much more important than the problem in, in, of Greece for the European stock market and for all markets. And in regards to the euro there, so when looking at the dollar, so the dollar in the short term, do you expect that to continue to strengthen with the US interest rates looking to rise in September? So you mentioned the euro appreciation there. So with that and other market movements, what effect could this have on the domestic economy of, the, uh, of Switzerland? Uh, the situation there is, is slightly different. I mean, Switzerland is the second biggest trading partner of, uh, of, of the European Union behind the United States, but ahead of China and, 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 and Japan. Here we had already the big movement in January, which was apparently a surprise for the market, but not for everybody. Uh, but uh, since then, the, the, the Swiss francs depreciated to currently 107. 
frankly speaking, this figure is not sustainable for the Swiss economy. Uh, 107 is not reflecting the strength of the Swiss economy. This morning we had bad export figures and import figures, which is just normal. Uh, but the Swiss economy, compared to the European economy, is still doing pretty well. Keep in mind also the Swiss economy is very flexible. The flexibility in the working market, in the workforce market is huge, it's impressive. You can lay off people very quickly, you can hire people very quickly, even faster than in the, in the States. The efficiency of the economy, fiscally, politically, uh, socially speaking, is extremely high. Take into account the yearly world economic uh, report, efficiency report, published by the World Economic Forum every year. Switzerland is still on the top. The economy of Switzerland is also extremely diversified, taking into account the, the exports that are done. For instance, we were mentioning China before. The exports uh, uh, of Switzerland to China is uh, metal products, tooling industry, is pharmaceutical, chemical uh, products, is jewelry and, and watches. Uh, so you see it's extremely diversified. So the commercial possibility to be successful for the Swiss economy is extremely high. Indeed, a weak Swiss franc would, to a certain extent, help exporters. But what we have done previously, when we were at 120 fixed by the Swiss National Bank, was actually we were subsidizing inefficient industries. And currently what we are doing is just giving back the strength to the market and stopping subsidizing artificially Swiss economies. And this is very important because this is enabling some industrial and structural reforms. Therefore, for the time being, I believe uh, 107 is uh, a little bit high. Uh, I would not be surprised to see within the next six months or even three months, a Swiss francs below 105 closer to parity. Indeed, it's politically uh, incorrect to expect a strong Swiss francs, but it's just reflecting the reality. We have a trading account surplus since over 30 years. We have a, a trade balance surplus, and this trade balance surplus is maybe going to decline in 2016, but not to disappear. Therefore, mathematically, economically speaking, you need to have a strong currency in Switzerland. Well, Francois, thank you so much for coming in today. As always, it was a pleasure having you your insight. Well, that's all that we have time for today. But for all the latest Ducascopy updates, do keep checking back. Goodbye for now.